Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on independent and dependent events. Our objective is to find the probability of independent and dependent events. And speaking of independent and dependent events, let's write the definitions. For independent events, the, this is when one event does not affect the outcome of the other event. And when compared to dependent events, this is when the outcome of one event affects the outcome of the other event. And again, our objective today is to find the probability of independent and dependent events. And so as we go on to our vocabulary startup, when one event does not affect the outcome of the other event, the events are independent events. For example, if you toss a coin twice, the first toss has no effect on the second toss. Complete the graphic organizer below. Well, for our picture it, what we spin on event one has no effect on what we do and roll in event two. So for listing our example, we could say something like spinning a spinner and rolling a number cube. As for the describe it, we could say when a first event does not affect a second event. For our real world link, independent is a common word in the English language. Use a dictionary to look up its definition. Explain how the dictionary definition can help you remember the mathematical definition of independent. Well, what I looked up and found for independent was not under the control of others. When you think about it, if you are an independent person, you're not under the control of anybody else. If you were independent from your parents, you would need them for things like food, house, a ride to school, a ride to soccer practice. We're still all pretty dependent on our parents. So in mathematics, though, an independent event is not controlled by the outcome of another event. So now that we know a little bit about the definitions and vocabulary behind independent and dependent events, let's get into our concept. And our first key concept is to find the probability of independent events. The probability of two independent events can be found by multiplying the probability of the first event by the probability of the second event. So the probability of A and B occurring is the probability of A times the probability of B. 
So you can use organized lists, tables, tree diagrams, or multiplication to find the probability of compound events. So as we look at guided example one here, one letter tile is selected and the spinner is spun. What is the probability that both will be a vowel? Well, in our first method here, we can use a tree diagram where we have our letter tiles, G, B, E, A, and for each tile, our second event, which is the spinner, could result in an A, B, or C, and an A, B, or C, an A, B, or C, an A, B, or C, which leaves us with this sample space, which are 12 outcomes. What is the probability that both will be a vowel? Well, as we look through here, no, 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 yes, there's one. No, no, yes, there's two. No, no. So two out of 12, or one-sixth. Now, just like the fundamental counting principle made it easier to count the number of outcomes, this will help us find, with multiplication, an easier way than tree diagrams to calculate probability. If we look at our two events, the first event is the probability of selecting a vowel on the number tiles. Well, there's two out of four vowels, which is one half. The probability of spinning a vowel was one out of three, so one third. If we take this one half and multiply by the one third, we also get one sixth. So whether we choose the tree diagram or multiplication, we get the probability one sixth. And now in our second guided example, the spinner and number cube shown are used in a game. What is the probability of a player not spinning blue and then rolling a three or four? So you're asked to find the probability of spinning not blue and rolling a three or four. The events are independent because spinning the spinner does not affect the outcome of rolling a number cube. So now we can find the probability of each event. The probability of not getting a blue on the spinner, there's one, two, three, four spots out of five that aren't blue. The probability of getting a three or four on this number cube, there's two out of the six, which is one third. And so we can take the probability of the first event, which is four fifths, and multiply it by the probability of the second event, which is one third, to get four fifteenths. Now to check it, you could make an organized list, table, or tree diagram. For our got it question, a game requires players to roll two number cubes to move the game pieces. The faces of the cubes are labeled one through six. What is the probability of rolling a two or four on the first number cube and then rolling a five on the second? Well, we have two events. The first event is going to be the probability of rolling a two or a four. And our second event is going to be the probability of rolling a five. Now these are independent events. What you roll on the first number cube does not affect what you do on the second. So what is the probability of rolling a two or a four? Well, that's two outcomes out of six that we're looking for, which simplifies into one third. As for the probability of getting a five, that is one out of six. Now to find the probability of rolling a two or four on the first, and then rolling a five on the second, we're going to take that one third and multiply it by one sixth, which gets us a final answer of one eighteenth. And if you were to make a list, table, or tree diagram to show the sample space, it would verify the one eighteenth. So now we have probability of dependent events. If two events, A and B, are dependent, meaning what, you, what happens the first time does affect what happens the second, the probability of both events occurring is the product, still multiplying, of the probability of A and the probability of B after A occurs. If the outcome of one event affects the outcome of another event, the events are called dependent events. For example, 
you have a bag with blue and green marbles. As long as you don't lose them, you pick one marble, do not replace it, and pick another one. So, in our guided example, there are four oranges, seven bananas, and five apples in a fruit basket. Ignacio okay, selects a piece of fruit at random, and then Terence selects a piece of fruit at random. Find the probability that two apples are chosen. Well, since the first piece of fruit is not replaced, the first event affects the second event. These are dependent events. So we're going to find the probability that the first piece is an apple, and that is 5 out of a total of 16. And this is where things get a little complicated, where you have to think about it a little more. The probability that the second piece is an apple. Well, we no longer have 5 apples. We only have 4. And we no longer have 16 pieces of fruit to pick from. We have 15. So we have 5 sixteenths times 4 fifteenths, which after a little bit of cross-simplifying, breaks down to 1 twelfth. So the probability that two apples are chosen is 1 twelfth. Now, for our got it question, we will refer to the situation above and find each probability. So we're going to look for the probability of two bananas. Well, the first event is the probability that the first fruit selected is a banana. Now, before we find that, let's rewrite out our fruit basket. And you'll see why I'm doing that in a moment. We have four oranges. We have seven bananas. And we have five apples, which is a total of 16 pieces of fruit. Now, the probability of getting a banana the first time, there are seven bananas out of 16. Now, we're not putting that piece of fruit back. These are dependent events. So we're down a banana. So we're down to 6. And we're down out of the total to 15. And so now as we look for the probability that the second is going to be a banana, it's no longer 7 sixteenths. Instead, it's going to be 6 fifteenths. And actually, 6 fifteenths, I can simplify it by dividing by 3 on top and bottom to 2 fifths. So now I can look to multiply these two events, the 7 sixteenths multiplied by the 2 fifths. And if I look to cross simplify, I can divide the 16 and the 2 both by 2 and get 1 eighth. And when I multiply this now, 7 times 1 is 7. 8 times 5 is 40, so that my final answer here, the probability of getting a banana followed by another banana, is 7 fortieths. I'm going to come over to the other side of the page now to solve for C. The probability of getting an orange, then an apple. Well, I need to find the probability of getting first an orange, and I need to find the probability of the second event getting an apple. And again, if we write out our fruit, we had four oranges, seven bananas, five apples, which is again a total of 16 pieces. So as we ask ourselves, what is the probability of getting an orange first? Well, I have four oranges out of 16 total. And if I divide by four on top and bottom, this is one fourth. I'm not replacing it, so my oranges are down to three, and my total is down to 15. So now, what's the probability of the second piece of fruit being an apple? 
Well, I have 5 apples out of 15 total now. And this simplifies by dividing by 5 on top and bottom to 1 third. And so to find the probability of getting an orange, then an apple, 1 fourth times 1 third is my key, which is 1 twelfth. And that is my solution, 1 twelfth. I cannot suggest enough the importance of writing these out and then crossing out and editing your list as you go. There's really only so much you can do in your head, and by writing this out, by going, okay, I took an orange, that also reduces from the total, you'll be a lot less likely to make mistakes and a lot more likely to get these questions wrong. The probability is if you do this, you might be right. All right, enough bad math jokes. That's it for this lesson on independent and dependent events. Good luck.